Hey everybody, welcome back to Backlog Banter. I'm your boy Abram, and I'm here by myself. Uh, I want to sit down and react to the new Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom trailer. Um, I'm hoping we get some good new info here. I mean, it's almost six minutes long, so I think we will. Obviously, I'm super excited for this game. It's probably my most anticipated game for the rest of the year, um, and definitely the biggest game Nintendo has uh, for 2024, other than, of course, Endless Ocean, which I really enjoyed. Um, but let's, let's check this out. Let's see what the game has. Welcome to Hyrule, I love Hyrule, a vast land where Princess Zelda will journey through her grand adventure. Hyrule. I'm going to pause right off the bat. We're going to do a sort of Hassan Piker style reaction here because I had some issues with the Emio reaction. I was talking over it, but I had the audio too loud. Um, so we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to fix that this time. But I want to just look at the aesthetic of this game here. Um, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not this was the right engine to use uh, for for this game, whether reusing Link's Awakening was a good idea or not. My feeling is that th that choice reflects uh, Shigeru Miyamoto's idea of what a, a a good solution or a good idea is. His idea of a of a good idea, and I've said idea like five times. Don't hit me with a hammer or something. Um, his concept is that a good idea solves multiple problems and i think that reusing the engine does one obviously it keeps dev costs down and makes it more feasible to turn this game around somewhat quickly and and two because the Link's awakening engine operates on a tile-based grid it just makes it easier um it makes it easier to use this new echo mechanic right you're going to need places and very clear rules for where you can put objects, how you can duplicate them, how they interact with the environment. And in a game that's not on a grid-based, tile-based structure, you'd run into a lot of problems and I think a higher degree of jank than this mechanic inherently and intentionally calls for. Um, so that's sort of my tool sense. I don't think it's a particularly cinematic or a particularly immersive engine. Um, so I I think we're gonna approach this uh, as, a, as a puzzle box, a, opposed to like a really immersive new Legend of Zelda adventure, which has its pros and its cons. For me, it has both simultaneously. Um, but I, I like the engine on the whole, and I understand why they use it. So yeah, Let, let's let's see how they're bringing it to life. Rule is a land of plentiful abundance. From the central plateau, where Hyrule Castle stands enfolded by its castle town, to the outermost reaches, you'll encounter new and interesting people in like this is a good example of what i was mentioning just a minute ago right i mean this like obviously it's trading on the great plateau walkout moment and you know the great plateau certainly opened up to a more inviting and natural feeling world than this um but again it's it's a different intent i'll just be curious to see to what degree that sense of freedom of exploration can be recaptured in this way. I mean, to be fair, I think that A Link Between Worlds on 3DS is is so full of secrets and life that even though we're ostensibly repurposing that uh, Link to the Past map, it still felt like there was so much opportunity to explore. And I love that game. It's one of my favorite Zelda titles. Um, so I'm not just saying that, you know, moving away from Breath of the Wild means that the game is less explorative. I'm just saying that when you're trading on what Breath of the Wild is doing so clearly, you know, that's a tall order to stack up in, in a 2D framework. Um, so it's just a challenge Nintendo's going to have to address. Each of its diverse regions. The Gerudo Desert consists of scorching dunes as far as the eye can see and is prone to frequent sandstorms. I love that's a very cute animation for Zelda. Th that is one thing that, that does bring this world to life pretty clearly is I, I love the way the characters look. They've got so much personality. Uh, you know, even in, in, in Link's Awakening, when people said we're, we're kind of turned off by the by the toy aesthetic, I think that Link just looked so charming and he looked so good that he brought a sense of life to things. And it looks like Zelda's doing the same. Storms. That's no problem for the women of the Gerudo tribe, though. There are many ruins full of mysteries here. And an oasis, a great place to relax. I like that the Gerudo there reacted to... Zelda throwing down the bed. Again, these little touches, I think, are really going to elevate the game. Um, and I do just generally love how the other characters look. I will say that I really hope we at least get that Zelda amiibo, right? We better get that Zelda amiibo. I have... I'll grab it. I have the other amiibo. 
Jabul Waters is home to some of Hyrule's most scenic waterways. It's also where you can find the Sea Zora and the River Zora. The River Zora are a better design, I feel. I love them. I think that they're so funny looking. Um, that I, As I said, I felt like you should know that. Who each reside in their respective villages. Pausing again. Again, sorry. I, but I have to. I got so many things to say. You know, and I'm worried about the audio mixing, so we're doing it this way. I love the amount of detail here, actually. Um, I, th these little these little bamboo strands tied together with the string to, to, to form their huts. This is the sort of area in a game that I would just sort of sit in for a minute and admire. I love a good aquatic setting in a game, and this looks fantastic. Though they don't always get along. What could they be fighting about? I like him. Daunting cliffs and lava flows dominate the Elden Volcano region. Kakariko Village is nestled at the mountain's base, but you'll have to brave treacherous trails to reach the home of the Gorons. Oh, I love the Gorons, they look so cute. Those rocks may look delicious. Alas, they are not for Hylians. The Farren wetlands are a lush labyrinth of vegetation. As you wander the jungle, you might come across a Deku scrub. Obviously, we're trading on a lot of the aesthetics of classic Zelda. We're not doing a ton here that's new, but obviously it's been so long since we've seen this version of Hyrule and we've never seen it at this fidelity. I think that that's an important note to make, right? I mean, the the Hyrule of of, of, of the open air games of, of Breath of the Wild and Tears is not this Hyrule, really. I mean, obviously you have the Zora's Domain and you have... Goron City and you have everything there, right? But it's it's not depicted with the same art direction necessarily, in my opinion. It's it's an evolution. It's a new take. This is a lot more traditionally Zelda, and I think that that works really well. It's it's quite comforting to to see these aesthetics again. Um, I'm very excited to just walk around this world and and become reacquainted with classic Hyrule uh, with a level of detail we've not gotten to see it in yet. Rumor has it these peculiar creatures have a voracious sweet tooth. They look good. During your travels, you're likely to encounter people dealing with problems great and small. Keep track of quests. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's give them another second. Sorry, we're going to pause. Quests by browsing your adventure log whenever you'd like. Helping people with their troubles is a big part of your journey. And wise heroes are often rewarded for their good deeds. Let's pause it there. Okay. Main quest, side quests. I like that. I like that we're we're keeping a, a clear quest log. Yeah, I think this is a great idea. Um, and, and I think that the puzzle structure of this game really does lend itself to these fun bite-sized little challenges. I mean, that's one of the things I think Tears did very well. These smaller puzzle puzzles to solve. I love propping up the signs. I loved when you had to like randomly rescue a, a caravan um, that was being attacked or you had to just like when you had to pull a caravan out of a hole or something or you had to you had to do something. There's a lot of different things in that game, if you can believe it. Um, and I and I really enjoyed those types of challenges. And I think that this game is going to be even better suited to them. Um, and one question I do have, and we'll see if this gets answered later in the video. So apologies if I'm if I'm um, speculating on something where I'm about to get an answer to. But I'm hoping that when we get some of these challenges, you know, they're going to have finite amounts of solutions. I think where, where tears did lose me a little bit is that you could approach anything in any way. And to me, that just, it, it, it lost a little bit of the, of the bespoke charm of past Zelda titles in, in, their, in their puzzles. I, I think that ultimate player agency has its place and I enjoyed it to an extent, but I also like curation in my Zelda games, so I'm hoping that we were able to strike a balance here. Um, and this little this little challenge seems like it might it might be a good indication that it will. You know, it'll be a matter of how you find this little gentleman, right? And can you find him in many places? You have to go do a couple finite tasks to locate him and bring him back. I don't know. Travel waypoints. Objects known as waypoints are scattered throughout the land. Once you've discovered one, you can return to it quickly by selecting it on your map. 
Okay, I like that. It seems like there's a lot of like just traditional open world framework here, um, which is great. And again, you know, this is very evocative of how open uh, how open world traversal works in in the open air game. So it's very obvious that the relationship between um, Breath of the Wild and Tears and then classic 2D Zelda, that's a very in intertwined relationship. Um, and so I'll be curious to see as we get deeper in just how much is borrowed from those games. And then I guess, conversely, what's lost from the 2D formula by taking so many mechanics from the, from the 3D siblings. Even with the benefit of fast travel, getting around Hyrule can prove challenging. At times like these, why walk when you can ride? Gallop right over weaker enemies to send them flying and hop over small obstacles with ease. What okay, I love that you have a horse. Um, I want to say that in the Oracle games, you can get a horse, but I've not played those, so I don't know for sure. Um, but this is a really cool idea. Uh, obviously, it's not in a lot of the core 2D Zelda games. I want to... I, I want to say it's not in any of them, but it might be in those Oracle games. That's that's nagging in my head for some reason. Once you learn to make a carrot echo, you'll be able to call upon your trusty steed from anywhere in the overworld. I love that too. That's a great idea. That's a great way to implement this mechanic um, of, of the echo into this, like, because essentially what you're doing is, is you're turning what's typically a button, right, in, 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 Tears, Breath of the Wild, it's, it's the whistle. Um, but then in a lot of games, it's just a, a, a button to recall your steed or whatever, right? So turning into a little game mechanic, having the echo be multi-purpose like this is a really great design touch. As you explore, you may come across smoothie shops manned by business scrubs. Here you can blend the ingredients you've collected into delicious drinks. Smoothies have different effects based on the ingredients you choose. They're sure that's another great idea. And again, this is this is the cooking from from Breath of the Wild and Tears. So, yeah, it, you know, there's going to be an argument to be made at a certain point that this game is more of a 2D version of 3D Zelda than it is a a revival of 2D Zelda. Um, and it'll be interesting for the for the for the community to discuss and, and, and reconcile to come in handy during your travels. You can also equip outfits and accessories to enhance your abilities. Now, 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 you could say this is Breath of the Wild, but, the, but real ones know that this is, this is Triforce Heroes. Um, and obviously Grezzo worked on that title and we're, we're assuming, and it's a very safe assumption that Grezzo was critical to this game as well. So yeah, it's, it's cool seeing what they learned from that 3DS spinoff title. Um, make its way into a core game. And to look fashionable, obviously. Ooh, classic look. Please have a Tetra costume. Another ability. I like this little armadillo man, by Whether the way. you're trekking over rugged plateaus, through winding caves, or other complex locales, creating echoes is key to success. But sometimes they may not be enough. A huge boulder like this cannot be learned as an echo, and your other echoes won't move it either. For obstacles like these, Try has got you covered with the power of Bind. Use it to make even a massive boulder follow Zelda's movement. So we're doing Magnesis again. That's that's a, that's a modern 3D Zelda staple right there. I don't think it's not a staple because it's not in... Um, Excuse me, it's not in uh, the tears, but it basically is with Ultra Hand. This is actually closer to Ultra Hand, isn't it? I'm stupid. I don't know why I said it was like Magnesis. Because Magnesis is only metal objects. Now you can move the hammer. Bind can help you unearth buried treasure. Or That's like Magnesis. even reposition oh, troublesome that. enemies. You can also use Bind on your Echoes. So get creative and find ways to forge ahead. Alternatively, if you want to follow a moving object yourself, you can use Reverse Bond to go where it goes. Take advantage of a creature's ability to fly. Okay, I really like that. 
That's very smart. You know, what one concern I had from the reveal trailer for Echoes of Wisdom was that the the single mechanic um, of of the echoing could get tiresome if the whole game was built around it. But now that we know that there is a a Sheikah Slate style set of of abilities, and I'm sure that they're not just two now that we've seen the second, that not only opens up a lot more opportunity for puzzle solving, um, but I think it's just going to keep the game fresher than if all of your combat, all of your puzzle solving simply comes down to duplicating objects. Or to move around quickly. Armadillo Man. Swapping between bind and reverse bond is a great way to find clever paths forward. Let your imagination run wild, and you're bound to come up with all sorts of ideas. Use bind in combination with your echoes to overcome obstacles. Understanding how these two abilities work together will be essential to your progress. That's really good. That was really good. Let's pause for a second before we get to the end here, right? Again, I'm going to reiterate a concern I had, and I'm going to complicate it. How about that? To me, part of the fun of 2D Zelda is, again, the bespoke feeling. Even more so than in 3D, the degree of consideration of how the player character can move around is much higher, right? In, in 3D Zelda, you can, you know, you're going to oftentimes be able to route an, an obstacle simply by having more space. In, in 2D Zelda, everything is so carefully arranged. Um, and that's part of the fun. And I think part of the, uh, the reason that so many of us, myself, strongly have felt that re a return to 2D Zelda now more than ever makes sense is because what we have in 3D Zelda is, is the antithesis of that. You know, there's no challenge that you can't uh, es essentially conscientiously object to. Um, and so what we're finding here is, 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 I don't know if it's a third way forward so much as it is a, um, a, a prioritization of what 3D Zelda is doing and a sort of um, tacit admittance that there's not much interest within EPD3, which is a Zelda team, or, or within Grezzo to return to the 2D Zelda framework as we knew it. And, you know, one of my issues with Tears is that it felt like it was straddling the line between uh, between classic 3D Zelda and modern 3D Zelda, like Ocarina of Time and Breath of the Wild. Uh, it felt like that, right? But it wasn't really doing that. I think in in practice, it, it leaned so heavily on, on the modern style that, you know, in broad strokes, I didn't really feel like it captured the experience of playing a Wind Waker or a Twilight Princess or, or Ocarina Time or whatever. Um, and so my question is going to be playing Echoes of Wisdom, whether that is a, if there will be a similar feeling um, in that this game won't necessarily evoke what I enjoy about 2D Zelda, um, but instead will sort of channel this 3D framework into a, a 2d world um yeah and i'm very intrigued i'm very intrigued by how i feel about the game coming to the other side of it mysterious rifts are overtaking hyrule okay what else will zelda have to contend with in her grand adventure to save her kingdom there's only one way to find out. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Available September 26th only on the Nintendo Switch system. Pre-orders are available now on Nintendo eShop. Okay, that's a really good trailer. That was a really, really thorough trailer. Um, I'm really excited we got to see that. I guess my overall thoughts, just building upon what I just said, I thought there'd be more to analyze um, afterwards, but there wasn't, which is fine. Um, I'm very, very excited for the game. My, my trepidation is just in that, you know, I was anticipating we were getting something that was more akin to 2D Zelda as we knew it than we are. Um, but, you know, Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games ever, and for as many issues as I have with Tears of the Kingdom, I still think it's a it's a great game, if you can believe it. Um, so... I'm 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 really really looking forward to this and the 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 world I feel like just in the course of those five minutes 
a, a lot of my concerns about it have faded. It, it looks so detailed. I love the art direction. I love these characters, little mechanics uh, like like the the smoothies, these this new bind idea, the reverse bond. All of this is really exciting. Again, I, you know, I still have these these question marks about how much of the game is going to be these curated activities um, and how much of it is just going to be totally open ended, right? At a certain point, do you trivialize? Do you trivialize the careful design of Hyrule if you can attach yourself to a spider and climb up any wall? Maybe, but is it going to be fun? Very possibly. I mean, it was very fun the first time I played Breath of the Wild, right? Um, figuring out the the sort of the edges, right, of of, of the of the play space, that possibility space, um, and so part of the issues I had with Tears also was that it didn't. You could never recapture what I felt beyond the Great Plateau for the first time, um, and so. I almost wonder if by taking the imaginative design of those games and putting it in a new framework, you're inherently going to sort of re reignite that feeling I had first playing Breath of the Wild. I don't know. But what I do know is that, you know, we have, what, five weeks to go? Six weeks to go? That's not true. Seven weeks to go? Eight, eight weeks to go? Nine weeks to go? We have about two, we have two months that's not right. We have one month. Hold on. So that's that's four weeks, five weeks to the week. It will be in the twelfth. Six weeks, the week of the nineteenth. Seven weeks, to the week that contains the twenty sixth. We have seven weeks to go until this game comes out, um, which is very very exciting. I'm so pleased that there's such a a short um, reveal to turnaround. Reveal to release turnaround. Okay, I've stumbled through a lot of this video. I'm a little bit tired, a little bit rusty. Um, I've never really done a video in this framework, so if you liked it, you liked it. If you didn't, well, leave a comment anyway, because I think that helps the algorithm. Okay. Goodbye.